HC Practice Assessment Number 1, uh, Part A, T1 to T3. It's Topics 1 to Topic 3 from the National Training Package. For those that are unfamiliar with how we do these practice assessments, this is how it works. Step 1, the video will pose a question or a problem. At that point, you, the student, uh, listen to the problem, pause the video and uh, answer the question. Step two, continue the video and a hint will be provided. Again, pause the video if you need to and continue to complete the question. Step three, continue the video and a full explanation of the answer is provided. And I think that's the power behind this particular practice assessment. And then continue the video on to the next question. So let's start with the first question. Question one, in Australia, the majority of our base load is provided by what? A, geothermal energy, solar energy, coal-fired energy, or wind energy? So pause here. The hint is, uh, next to what large resources are our big power stations located? Power stations like Liddell are next to a very common natural resource. So the answer here is coal fired. All our base load in Australia comes from coal fired. We have uh, less than 1% geothermal, about 3% solar, and maybe 4 or 5% wind. And in Australia, there is no nuclear energy used to produce electrical power. Question two, current flows in a conductor caused by. So what's the current in a conductor caused by? Distorted electron orbits, depletion or lack of protons, movement of negative ions, or free or loosely bound electrons. So pause here. Here's your hint. Think about the subatomic structure and which part is used to carry the negative electrical charge. So the answer in this particular case is D, free or loosely bound electrons. Those are the electrons that are in the far outer orbits that are found in most metals or anything that is a good conductor has these electrons that are well, well away from the centre of the atom, making them good conductors. Question three, how is electricity transported over large distances? A, convert it to DC. B, voltage is stepped up through a transformer. D, stored in large batteries like the Tesla system in South Australia. And D, voltage is stepped down through a transformer. So pause here while you have a think. The hint is, think about resistance and how it is overcome over large distances. So if we have long cables, we're going to have large amounts of resistance. How might we overcome it? The answer at this time is B, voltage is stepped up through a transformer. So we often generate at about 15,000 volts, but we jump it up to about 330,000 volts to trans for over large distances. That very high voltage overcomes the high resistances in the cables. Question four, a solar array supplies a constant current of 8.2 amps for a period of three hours and 30 minutes. Calculate the total quantity of electricity produced. So pause here while you think about the quantity of electricity. Here's your hint. Quantity of electricity is measured in joules using time and current. And here's the answer. The formula actually is Q. We use the uppercase Q equals the quantity of electricity. So Q is equal to a current in amps multiplied by the time in seconds. Remember the SI unit for time is the second. So Q in this particular case is 
60 times 60 times 3 gives us our seconds for our 3 hours, plus another 30 times 60 for our seconds for the 30 minutes. We add those together, and then we multiply by 8.2, and you'll get 103,320 joules of energy. Question 5. If an open circuit was to occur in a simple series circuit, then what would happen? A. The voltage will drop to 0 volts. B. The circuit current would fall to 0 amps. C. The voltage will rise to high levels. Or D. The current will actually increase. So pause here. So here's your hint. Draw a circuit diagram. Draw a little diagram of a simple series circuit. Make an open circuit in it somewhere and say to yourself, what's going to happen? So here's the answer. It was B. The circuit current will fall to zero amps. The applied voltage will not change. Never does. Students often get this confused. Some of the voltages around the circuit might change, but the applied voltage will not. Voltage will rise to high levels? No. Will current increase? Uh, no. Question 6. In relation to the circuit below, the component labelled D is what? A. An energy source. B. A protective device. C. A control device. Or D. A load. So pause as you think about that. So the hint is, list the functions of each of the parts of the circuit you can see. See if you can name them all. If you can name them all, you'll probably get the answer correct. So the answer is, the rectangle is the symbol for a resistor, and a resistor is a load. So the answer was D, load. Our next question, question 7. What is 0 0.07 kilovolts expressed in millivolts? So pause here. The hint is, uh, do this in two steps. So do it in volts, convert kilovolts to volts, and then volts to millivolts. The answer is... Uh, 70,000 millivolts, so uh, 0 0.70 kilovolts would be 70 volts, and then if you were to go down to millis, that's another thousand, so it would be 70,000 millivolts. Eight, to measure the voltage across a load, the voltmeter must be connected how? How are you going to connect your voltmeter? A, in series with the load, B, in parallel with the supply, C, in parallel with the load, or D, in series with the control switch. Pause here while you think about it. The hint, as often I get my students to do, is to draw a simple circuit with a voltmeter and how you put the voltmeter in the circuit. Then think about how is it connected in the circuit. The answer for question 8 is C, in parallel with the load. So you're always, always connecting a voltmeter in parallel. Question 9, if the voltage applied to a circuit is halved and the load is in changed, what is the response of the current? So the current's going to be zero, the current doubles, no current change at all, or the current halves. So pause here, have a think about it, and again, draw a circuit if it helps you. Hint, is the relationship between voltage and current proportional or inversely proportional? So write out your Ohm's law formula and think about it.
So the answer is if the voltage applied to a circuit is halved, if the voltage goes down, the current also has to go down. They are directly proportional to each other. So if one goes down, the other must also go down. Question 10. What characteristic of electrical physics is described as the opposition to current? So first selection is pressure. B is flow, the third one is resistance, and the final one is voltage. So what is the characteristic of electrical physics is described as an opposition to current? The hint is, uh, list the three main characteristics of electricity. Think about what they are. Answer here this time. What is the characteristic of electrical physics described as opposition to current? That's resistance. Resistance is the opposition to current. Question 11. A 200 volt battery bank is used to supply a 500 ohm load. If a short circuit develops across the load, then A. The circuit voltage drops to zero. B. The circuit current drops to zero. C. The circuit voltage increases to dangerous levels. D. The circuit current increases to dangerous levels. So pause here and have a think. Here's your hint. Draw the circuit, then draw in the fault. So if you put a short circuit across any kind of battery, the circuit current will increase to very dangerous levels very, very quickly, normally making the conductor so hot that it often melts the conductor. 12. The graph below represents what? A, the relationship between load and current. B, the relationship between voltage and resistance. C, the relationship between supply and current. Or D, the relationship between supply and voltage. Here's your hint. Again, draw a simple circuit and label it. So the answer is A, the graph is relationship between load and current. So the resistance is the load and the amps across the bottom is the current. So it's the relationship between load and current. Question 13. Determine the current draw when a 56 ohm load is connected to a 24 volt battery. So pause here. Draw the circuit and use Ohm's law. So draw out a little diagram. Get out your equation sheet and your Ohm's law wheel. So I put the Ohm's law wheel on the screen for you. We're wanting this formula here. I equals V divided by R. So I equals the voltage divided by the resistance. They gave us the voltage at 24 volts. I'll just turn my pen on to show you. So that's where the 24 comes from. And they told us it was a 56 ohm load. That's where the 56 comes from. So 24 divided by 56 means we're going to have 0.42 of an amp or 420 milliamps flowing in the circuit. So it was this one here, current. I equals V divided by R. Question 14. In reference to the circuit below, when the switch below is closed, 300 milliamps flows. Calculate the value of the resistor. So resistor A, what's the value of the resistor or the resistance? So 
So again, it's just an Ohm's law problem. We've got 26 volts supply and 30 milliamps. So if we want to find out the resistance value, So it's R, we want to know what R is, and it's V on I, it's this one here. So R equals volts divided by current, so 36, which we get from the drawing, and 300 milliamps is 0.3 of an amp, which we got from the question, it's where the data came from, giving us a resistance of 120 ohms. So that ends DC practice assessment number one, part A. I hope you've enjoyed getting a little bit of learning from doing those problems.